want to get started? Let's get started, yes. Okay. All right. We, we're going to be starting for the next half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, technology is a funny thing, isn't it? Yes. If we were at an art, if we were really at a virtual, like an actual gallery, we'd be having a glass of wine, probably a white wine, mingling a little bit before we get to the work. So it's interesting when you take all that out, how the social dynamics shift. Just something to think about. It is very interesting. Because the, the, the thing that connects us is the, um, the physical connection of meeting somebody, but as well as this is, this is where the future is going, technology. Yes. Well, it is one of the ways to, uh, to stay global and uh, yes. to be able to open up. Well, it is one of the ways to, to the world yes. without the restrictions of uh, time and space. So I really like that. There's a delay on your audio. Um, I know. Do you I have just something else that. open, like your phone? Open my phone? No, is something else on that you turned on? Uh, no. But I also hear I also hear your delay. My delay? Yeah, but I think it's a matter of volume. I think there is a delay probably in movement and uh, in sound. But if we lower the sound, oh yeah, some he they said I have never seen this before or knew it was even a thing. So I'm looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> I know. This is new <laughs> for all of us. But who is this? I would like to know who who we're talking to. So do you want to introduce the salon? Sure. Why not? So. The Wandering Artist Art Salon is an initiative by local South Florida artists and uh, Dana and myself are the main members and we are, we took the challenge to create a, um, a platform where up-and-coming artists and established artists can connect directly to the public in a way that it is authentically uh, placing art at the center of the discussion. Uh, much of what we do deals with the process of making art and of being an artist. It's about breaking walls. Uh, we're not bringing anybody into the white cube. We're not bringing anybody into the art gallery where there are so many different kinds of social barriers. Mm -hmm. We're really bringing you into what it means to be an artist, to make art, to think creatively, to discuss topics uh, that are happening right now, very timely topics. And also, as of right now, we're using technology to be able to bridge the gaps uh, between maker and viewer between artists and um, art supporters and also to show that uh, there is a way to make things happen even if there are restrictions even if there is no way that everybody can get together uh, and book a show uh, if we can get together then I myself then perhaps the viewers in our social media uh, especially won't be able to come and see us so by having uh, this platform right now, we are bridging this gap. Now, we also have shows that are in physical spaces. And uh, those are truly amazing. But every now and then, I think it's a great idea to have these uh, virtual uh, art shows. So that is my introduction, but I'll let you then uh, add on to that. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, what no, else that, was, is, uh, uh, that was perfect. That was eloquent. And um, you covered everything, really. It's a... Uh, it's interesting when we did this virtual gallery exhibition idea, it's nothing someone hasn't already thought about, but it's actually we wanted to execute it because it's kind of solving the challenges we were having with travel, with distances, because we're at different parts of the South. Um, yes. You know, we don't want to be specific to where we're at, but um, 
that was always a hindrance to put things together. Mm -hmm. Also, it's unique. Um, technology is shifting the way that artists are representing themselves. A lot of artists are coming out through social media, and that's an interesting conversation to have with the traditional forms of being represented. And if that's a good thing, if, um, you know, it's an open-ended conversation of the way of new versus traditional representation. So I think this is also an interesting solution to creating something like a pop-up virtual experience where we want to show and talk about what we're working on, get critique, you know, make it about the artist and about the work, not so much about a gallery selecting you and your uh -huh. showcase. You know, it's way beyond that and it's more about, you know, bringing it back to the basics of being, what is being an artist and, and loving that. Well, that's the best part. Yeah. That, that is the best part. And then the third thing I was thinking is just, um, so travel, gallery versus new, like, you know, traditional versus new. And then the third thing would be um, technology. And technology being the future, it's, you know, we can't avoid it. So how do we embrace that into our practice and how will that pivot the way we create work? So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's basically why we started this, and this is our first one. And John, he said his name's Johnny from Seattle, so thanks for joining us. Um, we have a few All more right. joining. Welcome. Again, Welcome. my name's Dana Blickenzerfer, um, and this is uh, Jonathan Schiemann. Did I say it yes. right? Yes, that's correct. And then we'll let's get into the, the gallery. So we're going to just walk Look. through and uh, see, what we, see what we do. All right. So this is the front desk reception, I guess you could say. Look at that. That's where you get your um, yeah. pamphlets about the show. Yeah, this is where we get the... So I'm going to go with... I'm just trying to navigate slowly. This is like the first time I'm using this program. <laughs> so... So, you this, so... So we have to tell everyone this isn't to scale. Um, there's yes, some glitches with technology, so... You know, we'll, we'll tell you dimensions if it's necessary, but more this is just for uh, a general overview, but it's not to scale. So this is the exhibition we're showing today. Today's our open reception. <laughs> right. Nice. Look at, look at all this. Yeah. Looking amazing. Yeah. I love the show. So it's going to be fun to see it, everything in, in uh, more detail. So I'm just taking an a overview, and then we're going to take one work at a time and kind of dissect it a little and just talk about uh -huh. it. Yes. How's the lag time on your end? Um, I don't think it's much. I don't know. Okay. I have it open on my phone just in case. Okay. So let me open also on my phone so I can also follow. Okay, so this is the room. Um, we're showing about 12 works each. Um, we're so Southern uh, Southern Belt artists. Um, we love to collaborate together. Um, so we kind of, this is all virtual kind of, where he showed me what he was working on and I kind of was working on this, some things, but we never really let that affect what we were producing, it just kind of, sure. yeah, right? Is that the best way you want to explain the way we curated it? I would say so, yes. We, um, we're quite different in our approaches, and uh, yet we maintain a, an open channel of communication, and um, we, we appreciate each other's uh, uh, works and, um, and uh, our approach to our careers. Uh, always uh, pushing the limits, the boundaries, and uh, what I'm what I'm mostly impressed by this uh, this virtual gallery uh, is that it does give you the impression of being there. Yeah, isn't it exciting? It feels like I'm it I'm is. with the work. I'm looking at the art right now. Yes. When why why can't we be? That's the point. Of course. So we have yours first. Um, can you guys see okay. it? Okay. Yes. So we can kind of just like uh, zoom in. I don't want to go too fast. So this is ex uh -huh. this is exciting. What is this? So that that is a very uh, strange <laughs> piece of art. Let's see. Okay. Can you get much much closer? Let's just see how how much closer you can get. Yeah, we can go all the way. 
Let's see. Let's see how high I can go. Hmm. Let me see if I can pull it up. So it's zooming really too close. This is. I'm mm -hmm. trying to angle it, but it's not letting me. But no, yeah, it won't let you angle. It's okay. But we can see the. De I'm at the detail with the 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 robin and the uh -huh. flowers. So much of my work uh, deals with. Uh, how we transform as we move across vast stretches of time and space. So what do I mean by that? As uh, families and people uh, move from place to place and time passes, if you were to do that for thousands of years, you'd end up becoming quite different, quite hybridized. In other words, if you have heard of the languages Spanglish or Creole. Uh, here in South Florida, we have a lot of Haitians. They speak Creole. And we also have, all over the country, really the US, uh, communities who speak hybridized languages, such as Spanglish. Uh, but basically, in every part of the country, you have communities who bring in their cultures, their food, uh, their religions. And once they come here or they go anywhere else, they hybridize. And because I'm a symbolist artist, uh, the way I chose to talk about this aspect of immigration is by simply uh, creating these uh, hybridized creatures. So right here you have a woman and a man, and obviously this woman is half something. Some people see a, a snake, some people see a mermaid, and the guy is, uh, is half horse. Uh, if you get really close, which might not be possible right now, but these ribbons that are being that are flying are being carried away by the robins. Uh, they say, "I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine." In the ribbon. In the ribbons, okay. yes. It might it might not be easy to see uh, right here right now. Oh, okay. Well, but in the ribbons, it, that's what it says. Each one of the ribbons has a different word. Uh, see, so get close to one. No, you won't be able to see it. But yeah, it's okay. Right. It's okay. What matters is that what I'm saying is as we move across time and space, as we migrate, as we change, as we go through different phases of life, sometimes it takes 50 years for you to complete this process of hybridization. Uh, and we might find people who stick together, families, uh, couples, children and parents. Uh, fr uh, and uh, that is what this is all about, that no matter where you go, I'll go with you. I belong to you, you belong to me, as we change. So that's what yeah. this... Uh, uh, Johnny said, it's like the man is burdened by the woman, but she has her grips on him. Exactly, yeah, so just... not letting go of each other. Uh, this is not necessarily a peaceful painting. There is a, uh, there is a, there's a tension there in, uh, in between these two characters. Yeah. And also the sky is quite dark, but there's, there's a, an opening of light around her head. So there's a, a collaboration between the, the two of them as they as they battle the, the challenges of, of migration and of uh, change, uh, and changing times as well. What was the process? Is that oil? That is oil, and that's a triptych. So there's three canvases I together there. You guys see that? So like on the where his chest is is where the canvas is a separate canvas. <coughs> yes. And then where the legs are for the um, what's the half? half um, the animal legs uh -huh. is where the start of the other canvas is. I, I don't it's, know if you can see my mouse, but I'm kind of like pointing to it. I, I can see it. And, no. then, and then here at the top. So Johnny Johnny's saying uh, it's like the man is burdened by the woman, but she has her grips on him. It is true. So I... You know, I, I'm, I'm very much into genealogy and into studying um, human migration. And the truth is, families tend to stick together. It doesn't mean that it's always easy. So yes, he's burdened uh, and the woman has his, her grips on him, uh, but they're still together. He definitely could get rid of her. He definitely could, uh, with the strength of his paws or his legs, in his arms, he could definitely get rid of her, but he's choosing not to. He's saying this is a headache, but I'm sticking with you. And she doesn't have any arms, if you look. So yeah. she depends on him uh, to, to carry her around. So 
they are working the symbiotic kind of relationship where they need each other. That's cool. That's what it's about. Uh -huh. Any questions? We have uh, 14 people with us right now. Thanks for joining. All right, 14 people. Welcome, welcome. We're, uh, sure we just started the... the yeah, we just started the virtual gallery, so you just started with us, so thanks for joining. Yes, thank you for joining. Can you explain the horns as they traditionally sim symbolic of a devil or evil spirit? Sure, sure. So, yes, you're right. Uh, the horns are traditionally symbolic with uh, the devil or evil spirits. Now, this one here, because the man, the male figure, has a... Uh, uh, horse legs, then I guess it provides enough of a context to show that I'm talking about a, a centaur um, or a, uh, uh, what would you call, um, I forgot, there's another hybridized creature uh, who is half bull and half, half man. Uh, and Picasso used to call himself that creature quite a lot. Toro? <laughs> well, the Toro is uh, the Spanish for bull. And um, and I use this a lot in my in my art because I'm talking about it, something that sp started in Spain. This whole migration from my family started in Spain uh, a long time ago. So whenever I add uh, the centaur or the minotaur, that's the one that I I was trying to remember. The minotaur has horns. The centaur does not have horns. But as you hybridize the Minotaur with the Centaur with full humans, you end up getting different creatures. Yeah. So this I'm really not talking about the Judeo-Christian um, tradition of adding horns to mean that it's more of an evil or a devilish creature. I'm going back to the, the visual language of, of, of uh, Romans and Greeks where the picture of the of the devil didn't quite exist yet because he wasn't Judeo-Christian. So that's why I'm using this. Awesome. Also as a link to Spain. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Well, yes. let's see. Let's, uh, should we move on? Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. There's so much to see. Okay, so the next thing, um, the, 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 a nice contrast between, let's pull back and look at these two. So yes. a nice contrast in this show that we wanted to show today or exhibit is I'm usually, um, I'm not a, like a, these are photographs on the right of like a kind of a performance piece. So we have his oil paintings that are very detailed and very symbolic with a, you know, uh, more of a expressionist type of performance. Uh -huh. And I think, what do you think about that? together. I think it's amazing. I love it. I think it goes well together. Yeah, I think the, the it tells a, a unique story together. And yes. then as we continue, we'll like see as they develop. So the next one um, is a is something I was working on. Uh-huh. Feels like a computer game. Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. I don't want to get anyone nauseous. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here we are. So Tell us about is... it. What? Tell us about it. I, I, what was the experience like? What was the process like? So this is a, a unique process. So I guess I would call it a um, color body art series. It's nice. a series of 12 um, still life shots that we took in a studio where we had um, like a spectrum of color powder mm. and we this like the project that I you know assigned for this work was to take one level of color and what expression did that create and how can I best represent that so Great. I'm using the female body oh. I'm using the dynamics of you know feminism and modeling essentially and what is beautiful you know some of the f some of the positions are not as beautiful so it's kind of talking about that conversation having a, a powder what does that mean to me and how do I best express that in an yes. action so there were a lot of dynamics that were going on um, that 
created a unique um, performance. Yes. And the performance were through still images that were taken. Huh. And how did you, uh, how, do, how do you feel uh, using your body as a medium for art? I know that it's new for you. Yeah. So how, how is that, that breakthrough? Because uh, how do you see, where do you see that taking your career, your, your visual language? It was, um, I was nervous at first because I didn't want to be judged. I bet. Yeah, I, I didn't want to be judged. I come from a very uh, religious foundation that I truly believe in, and I didn't want to, you know, disrespect, be disrespectful to myself or my body or sure. what I believe in. But at the same time, you know, art is about breaking barriers and boundaries, and if I'm not questioning my own, um, you know, work and you know, what am I doing? You know, I'm not. I, so to me, being a part of the art movement is always, you know, questioning things, taking an idea and seeing how far I could push it. And it, it, even if I push it too far, it's still part of the whole process of realizing myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. So yes. to say the answer, it was challenging using my body. Um, I Imagine. But then it, but then it was, it was just like thinking about other models, like a modeling career, women who use that very seriously and they're very professional and they use their bodies, and yes. and then the conversation is, well, how long can you use your body? Can you use mm -hmm. it when you're 80? Can you use it when you're 70? Like, oh. you know, so the performance and using the body, you know, what does that mean? Yes. So it's a lot of social conversations that it's I'm great. Just having with myself. Well, the body is politic, as uh, as people say, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to remove uh, the body, especially the female body. And I mean, especially not in a way that uh, I wish it wasn't the case, but it is the case that the female body uh, brings a lot of uh, politi political connotations. It has always been at the center of the, co of the conversation. Yeah. It has always been at the center of uh, art. And... Uh, sometimes for the wrong reasons, oftentimes as uh, just objects that were being objectified. And uh, what I like about uh, this, uh, the art, uh, the performance uh, aspect of the art world that has been really um, taken over by females reclaiming the power of their own bodies. So they're saying, I will use my body the way I choose to use, uh, not by, especially a man who is uh, uh, portraying this in an angle that is does not reflect her own agency. So I still, I, I'm a painter myself and I love uh, the power of the female body, but I find it very important that more females start uh, claiming, reclaiming the power of their uh, body language. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very important. And it's a really strong time for that. And like you said, in yeah. a really strong conversation. Definitely. Because, and, and being, using this uh, performance, it's, you know, you question it, like, is this really art? What is mm -hmm. art in performance? And that's something new for me that I'm really enjoying. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually using these um, pieces in a, like a setup, like um, in an oil painting. So I'm using myself as a subject and I'm putting it back into a, an oil painting, which is what I like to usually work with because uh -huh. of, you know, school, just learning the craft, which is... So going into a more modern environment with performance and going back yes. to is pushing a new conversation, which is... Really exciting. Yes. Um, Johnny the, said, uh, this is really neat. There's something commendable, commandable about this because you have one shot at it. Other, you only have one shot at it. Otherwise, the rest of the expressions would have jeopardized as your body would have been stained from the previous pigments. Love how the powder wraps behind and around your head. Yeah, yeah. so it was, it, re, it was really tough because there was a lot of studying and strategy we had about five colors and we had to go from light to dark because once I went dark, you can't, it changes the whole, as you see as the progression goes, 
it all changes. And like once you have purple on you, you know, this whole, you can't capture this moment again. Yes. And this is a, a light, a yellow, you know, happiness, um, like freedom, more of a so, shot. So he was right. Yeah, you only have one. You only have a few takes to get it right. Yes. So interesting. So let's go on to the next one. So All right. this is back to um, oil, uh, the oil painting. So, uh huh. So this one's called I Am For I Am Queen. Yes, this one here. Um, see if it goes perfect. It's like we have a walking tour. Are you with me? Uh -oh. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, we're still on. Yes. So yes, this one is a uh, is quite a an important piece uh, in in uh, in my collection. It's really part of two different collections. Uh, one, the beginning at the very beginning, this painting was shown as a part of the um, of a, of a show that deals with uh, prejudice and uh, the. The, the, the model is uh, Tati uh, Pian Castelli. This, she's a Brazilian uh, woman. She's 32 years old. She's a very accomplished um, playwright and author and um, a vlogger, an influencer. She writes novels. Uh, her plays have been shown at the, at the Broadway of Brazil. She's an immigrant to this country here, to the to the U.S. But most importantly, besides being somebody so uh, accomplished, she has Down syndrome. So she, this is a lady with Down syndrome, and uh, the whole world uh, didn't believe she could go as far as she has gone already. And I was invited to participate in a in a show that dealt with. Uh, the accomplishments of people with Down syndrome. Now, considering that she's also an immigrant who has to do all of that, uh, not in a place where they speak her first language, which, which is Portuguese, I thought that her challenges are considerable. Yet, we're able, we were able to show this work plus the work of two other artists. Uh, uh, and, and they... Together, a Manu Militão uh, is one artist from Brazil, and also uh, we also have other artists uh, who are involved. I'm trying to remember every single one who was involved. We had um, uh, Jade was the curator, uh, Lina was the a photographer who was part of it. Manu Militão was another artist, and we all together we went to the. United Nations headquarters in New York and we were able to talk and show our art at a Times Square gallery where we had mostly uh, personnel from the UN. Wow. And, and this was an incredible event and um, the impact was so huge. Uh, now we're talking to UNESCO and perhaps we're going to be showing this in Paris through UNESCO. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all international organizations and they believe in the power of art to combat prejudice. And right now I'm showing this one piece uh, in my current show that I'm putting together. And uh, sh this is the first uh, painting that appears in, the, in my current exhibit. Because it deals with immigration, because it deals with people uh, who had to overcome so much. Yeah. So what did they say? Um, did you have to do like a like you wrote a essay with this? Yes, I have a I have actually several essays written uh, with this year, and uh, what I'm doing here is in a symbolic manner. Mm -hmm. In this essay, I discuss this uh, in more depth. If you look around, it's all black. It's all dark. So this lady, she has come from a place of complete darkness. And there's some little people right by her feet. 
and these are the naysayers. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, these are the small people who are around you saying that what you're doing is not good enough or that you are not good enough for the goals that you have, that you're not pretty enough or rich enough or tall enough or um, whatever it is. So if you could zoom in a little bit, uh, Dana, towards her, her feet, uh, her base, uh, we would be able to see more of these people. Yeah, that's the thing. It doesn't angle. I'm trying. Yeah. Okay, so we might not be able to. It's okay. It's not a big deal. If I zoom out, you can see the... Yeah, you can see more of the people by going farther. That's that's true. Yes, by going farther, you can see even more. Sorry, so I can't angle one or way. Small it's okay. Technology. You can leap farther, yeah. So these are the naysayers. And on their chests, there's five words. One uh, per person. It says... Um, this says, uh, such a time as this. I had to look at the painting because it's right behind me, the original. Such a time as this. Such a time as this, if you Google it with the word queen, you'd come up with the with the biblical uh, verse from the book of Esther. Yeah, and for it's such not a time as this, she was called for, I remember that. Yes. She was called for a purpose. Basically, mm -hmm. she, uh, Esther... And her people, they were going to be slaughtered in, in the kingdom of Persia. But she had the opportunity to go into this, uh, basically a beauty pageant. And whoever won would become the, 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 the wife of the king. And to make a long story short, she was there representing her people. And because she won the pageant and she became the queen of Persia, she was able to slaughter all the naysayers, the people who wanted to slaughter her people, were the ones who were slaughtered. So what I'm trying to say through this is, uh, this lady whom I painted, Tachi, she is the queen of, of her story, and she's representing her people. And all the people who didn't believe her, they have been slain. They have all been destroyed. Uh, and she has proven to be a, a true queen and make so much happen. Does she, feel, does she feel like a queen or does she feel like... She feels very much like a queen. She has a, an incredible sense of a purpose and a great sense of purpose. She's very much very confident about her body, her sexuality, her ability and capability as a, as a human being. There is nobody st stopping this lady. Uh, she's she's gonna go far, and I'm very glad I captured her at this moment because we're gonna hear about her a lot. Awesome. Did you do when you did this uh, the painting? Was it from a photograph or was it in person? Um, it was both. So, I, 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 I took a photograph of uh, her face, and I had a photograph of her body. She was wearing clothes, so much of her body is from imagination. And I made her taller and stronger than she actually is. I gave her more muscle, and I gave her more height, because a symbolic piece. Uh, as a symbolic piece, I give myself license to change things around. Got it. Yes. Does anyone have any uh, questions? It's a gorgeous piece. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited that it's going to go to Paris. That's amazing. I know, it might happen. You never know, but it's we're working on that right now. I believe it will. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see your, your piece. Okay. Okay, this thank one. You, John is saying that there's a nice connection from the art to the concept behind it. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay, so this one um, is another, the second color we used in the series. Um, you know, experimenting and exploring new avenues using pigment cool. powder and photography. Uh, finding the female expression through utilizing my own body and colored pigments to enter new spheres of liberation. Wow. So that's kind of, um, this one obviously was purple, pink, um, so we played on a woman's power to be flirtatious, to, nice. to call in her prey, you could say, to call yes. in, to call in her, uh, what, she's, what she's seeking, because women have that much power. Yes. So this is a very significant um, 
every woman has a female side, a, a, a flirty side. They use that feature whether they like to or not. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about that. Very good. So that's what this one is. <laughs> I see the power of seduction there. Uh, very, it's this the. I'm 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 incredibly glad um, that this new branch of uh, of feminism uh, is not uh, ignoring the, the 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 power of seduction that is a uh, very much uh, part of the female power and uh, to use that to understand that is to understand another uh, unique element of, of of female power to not ignore that aspect so. Yeah, Good because job, it, it does seem it does seem like you know neither right or wrong. It does seem there's a bigger um, identity of female power that is not transgender, but they could do both roles. Sure. If that means you know by shaving of the head or by you know showing an exterior of strength that you know stands for both a man and a female, which is neither here nor there. But yeah. I also believe in, you know, the, the feminine, womanly side that is innate in all, bred in all women. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what this talks about. Very, very good. So we could go on. But yeah, this is the pink, the pink one. I like the background, how uh, it looks like fireworks or like clouds. So the, yeah. the aesthetics of this is really working. Yeah, it's strong. Yes. Okay. Good job. Okay, what's this one? Oh, Let's see what's coming up next. Sorry, got a little out of control there. It's so it's not easy. No. Are you are you tired already? Do you wanna no, uh, stop and walk uh, to the cafeteria of this gallery, okay. or we keep going? We're good. So oh, Johnny yeah. said, I can definitely can see the duality of the arm pose. It's powerful. Oh yeah, thank you. The, the strong nice. toss of the, like the hips. Yes. Yeah. So what's this one? Sweeter. All right. Uh, sweeter than wine. You see, uh, underneath you can see some of the, the wording. Yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah, if you go a bit farther, you might be able to see more, I think. I zoomed out. Yes. So... Again, uh, these are all works that deal with my upcoming show. And uh, this show uh, it, it really portrays different facets um, of uh, the immigrant experience. And when I say immigrant, I don't mean to focus only on first generation immigrants. I truly am uh, calling the, the attention of everyone to stop and think about those who made the crossover, uh, the ones who left everything behind, our ancestors, if you're not a first generation immigrant, who left everything behind to come to this country or to different countries as well. Um, I, I choose to focus on that because of the courage that it takes for this, uh, there's a study that shows that uh, right below the experience of losing a loved one, so the below the experience of the de of experiencing the death of a loved one, of a father, a mother, a spouse, right below that, second to that pain is the pain of immigration. Wow. Yes. So that is uh, quite powerful. And just because we are going through a very convulsive moment in our uh, country, in our nation, where um, unfortunately our president is referring to uh, the amount of immigrants in our cities as infestations of immigrants. Uh, this is a, 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 a language that's taken right out of, uh, of Nazi books. Uh, previous to the Holocaust in Nazi Germany. So I'm, I chose to face this, this, this challenge uh, head on, and uh, I'm choosing to speak about different powerful young 
uh, immigrants, lots of females are involved in this. And uh, this lady in particular, I met her over on Twitter uh, many years ago. Her name is Nia Tandini, and she's uh, from the Balkans. She was born in Albania, and today she lives in France. And she's an incredibly powerful woman, incredibly knowledgeable, uh, talented. Uh, she has a, a degree, I believe, in, in art history. Uh, she's an art expert. And yet she faces so many challenges. Wow. Uh, simply because she's not French. And, uh, and in France uh, today, uh, I, I personally know so many people who are deciding to leave France, even though they're French already for three generations, but because they don't have a last name that sounds French enough, there's a lot of prejudice. So yeah. there's a lot of prejudice going on in French society, not just in American society, but in Europe as well. So I decided to portray her. And we talk a lot. We are uh, almost confident when it comes to art and uh, what we see uh, in, in, uh, in the relationship between um, uh, viewer and art history and, and artists and, and makers and, and, uh, and how art has a place in society today. And we often talk about the word of saudades. Saudades is an untranslatable word that comes from Portuguese. And that is what's written on that heart that's right above her fingers. And uh, if you look at her hand that's closer to her hips, she's dropping a knife. Right here. Yeah. Yes. It's hard to see, but it's right there. And uh, the heart that says that heart, the word saudades the closest we can get to the translation of that word is longiness or to miss or to yearn. Uh, but that's not really a translation that's good enough for this word. This word really means to miss someone or a place you have never been to or you have never met. It's very, very difficult to translate that word. But I'm talking about the longiness that Dias diaspora uh, communities uh, usually experience. People who have been born away from their homeland, but they grew up listening to tales of how beautiful the pastures or the, 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 how good the, the food or how great the music of their homeland uh, was. Wow, yeah. Yes. So... The, the idea of missing something that is so sweet, something sweeter than wine, but that you will never be able to experience because it just doesn't exist mm -hmm. where you are right now. Yeah. So that longiness that's really in, deep inside of you, it feels like a cut. It feels like something that uh, will scar you, even though you have never seen it with your own eyes or experienced it with your own mouth. So that is what this is all about. Wow, that's incredible. Yes. And, are you, are you, and to uh, go along with Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was. Uh, you said you were doing a series where you're doing different, um, almost female immigrants from different regions. Yes. Is that correct? Or would you yes. ever consider it, it, incorporating the like the French colors or the flag or how literal do you get with um, represent like political symbolism? So I, on the paintings themselves. There aren't much of a of a of a national identity going on. It's more about the sitter. It's more about the muse. Okay. And because she's a big fan, she's a, a lover of Caravaggio and also of Rembrandt. I chose to go dark. with the, yeah. the chiaroscuro, this light and dark theme, uh, basically because uh, that is a, a style that uh, that uh, that she likes. And I personally am very much in touch with that style as well. So I wanted to portray more the identity of the sitter, okay. uh, yes, in this piece uh, than anything else. Everything else will have more of a national identity, not so much the paintings, but the installations. Got it. Yeah, like yeah. The, maybe the use of painting on the flag, or there's so many ways exactly. to take it. Yeah, that's amazing. We're looking forward to seeing more of this. I look forward to showing you guys. Any uh, questions while we're here? That's a very deep, um, 
you know, understanding that feeling of that burden of the love you can't understand, but you should know because it's in, you know, it's in your inheritance. Yes. That's intense. And, and we all have that in our, in our families, you know? Yeah. It's very close to home. Yes. All yeah. right. Let's see. Let's move to the next one. Let's move on. Going around so we wall. have seven people watching us. I, I wish they would uh, go on the chat. There's a stream chat and they can say hello. Yes, so you guys who are watching, don't be shy. We're here for you. I would love to chat with you guys. Yes, we would. It just takes a second to log in if you didn't make an account, but it's free. So don't feel like you can't ask questions or talk with us. Yes. Um, okay, so this one is another body series. Um, photograph still life, I guess still photograph. Um, ex using red, right? Red is obvious for love and strength and beauty and um, I, I think this evolved nicely because you know because of the way that the the powder fell towards the lower part of a female Yes. Um, really points in her, you know, who she is, her femininity. Um, sure. I thought that was a play on where where the powder landed on the person. Um, sure. And but besides that, we you know playing and tossing the hair. Um, this was just kind of just a fun, not so much seduction, but more on just like being empowered. Uh huh. Yes, I, I I right away got this impression, uh, Dana, of uh, you know the red and where it landed on your body, and then the uh, about uh, the, the the female um, cycles, right? Yeah. I think it's something that is very powerful, and it has to be embraced. It has been muffled and even censored so much by. Uh, our Puritan society, uh, when in fact this is the, a symbol of uh, health and uh, yeah, beauty, longevity. Longevity, I know. It's it's something that once it's gone, women are they all actually mourn for their you know their health. They're getting older, yeah. so it's a it's a beautiful thing. And, and the significance of a woman getting a cycle is becoming of a wo womanhood, the path yes. to womanhood. So yes. it's kind of a not. It, it didn't. It's very subtle. If if um. Sure it is. If if you get if you catch it, you know you know you focus there and you kind of yeah. can think on it. But that's kind of where this this is an exciting way. The way this turn turned out for this one. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So very nice. Let's go to the next one. Mm-hmm. This is fun. It's a lot of fun. I love it. Cool. We have to do this a lot more. Yeah, we could do this monthly. Let's do this. It's because we paint all the time, so we always have stuff. And the good thing about this is, um, as we're you know working with galleries or we're in our other shows, those take time, like six months to a year to produce. So in yeah. the meantime, you know the Wandering Masters Art Salon loves to create something either monthly or quarterly where we can get on and curate each other. So mm -hmm. we're learning just as much as we're talking. It's yes. almost like we're coming to aha moments as we talk to each other. Of course. So, as an artist to an artist. So just a side note. Well, continue on that side note. Uh, it, is a, it is rare to have the opportunity both for artists to be able to connect with their audiences, uh, it's almost like bringing them inside the studio. Yeah, and, uh, studio visits. Yeah. Also, yes, and also, um, it's a stream of consciousness, right? We're 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 talking really um, in a very free way. Uh, we're not being restricted so much by by time, uh, by big crowds asking too many questions and. By photographers, like in a, in a show, yeah. uh, we're really, really, really. We could be having coffee here right now and chatting. It's and then these private, these more in, intimate 
um, yeah. studio visits, so much more enriching information comes from it, I feel. That you mm -hmm. can't get at like an exposition that opens. Because that's more of like the PR, the play, you know, it's a bigger, you know, so this is more intimate. Yes. Uh, Johnny said, uh, love it. Again, it's another duality, talking about the last photograph. Thank you. On a mm -hmm. side note, on one side, we love the beauty of a woman at the surface level, but we should also embrace, like Jonathan said, Said the beauty that women bring to the world beyond the surface, the birth of another human being. That's awesome. Amazing, amazing. Good, good. You got it. Yeah, Johnny. The truth is, women are powerful, my friend. And uh, <laughs> nice there is um, it, there there is a a, a true um, the the gift that we have of a uh, of a. Uh, the female power, once once appreciated, it's good for all of us. And uh, I always think of my own, uh, the females in my family, my my mother, my sister, who now has a, a daughter and she's pregnant of another girl, and my grandmothers. Yes, the the birth of another human being, uh, what it takes to make it, uh, being a mother, a professional, and also not only that, but. Um, hard-working, strong human beings, um, I think the challenges are so huge, and yet we have so many females who are so powerful, and I would say that most women are. Uh, th there needs to be a lot more appreciation. Now, it's not that they need our appreciation, it's just that the world is coming to understand that uh, we owe a lot to them. Mm -hmm. So. And it's just, uh, I think the fact that more women are speaking up, as they say, you know, a lot of people are speaking their truth. Everyone yes. has their own perspective. Everyone goes through different dynamics and cultures and norms. But just to communicate, we grow and learn from one another. And then yeah. that also helps make a woman more confident. Yes. I feel through the development. Because women yeah. and men express differently. Men, sure. Men operate differently. But women... Not all women, but certain women maybe tend to, you know, need to speak their truth. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is the development of a woman to yes. another extent. But yeah. So, Amazing. So tell us about I Am You. Sure, sure. If you if you can get a little bit closer, we yeah. might be able to, and then we're going to get uh, back away if you can. Just go close and then back away we will see that it says i am you above the halo of a of this calf this baby uh bull uh and then on the arm of the parent figure the older bull or cow it doesn't matter if it's a male or female it says you are me so i am you and you are me Can so you see it? I zoomed in. Yes, you see right on the on the arm of the older uh, uh, cow or bull it says you are me. So I'm uh, I'm truly just talking about the cycle of um, of memory and of experiences that take place. Uh, they 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 resurface generation after generation. So there you go. I am you. You are me. Um, when I became an immigrant to this country, I was born in Brazil, and when I became an immigrant, I realized that a lot of the experiences I was going through, even though I have to confess, I, I came here in a privileged position. I, I didn't struggle like a lot of immigrants struggle, yet it was an experience of uh, immigration, my own experience, which to me, it was a uh, uh, enormous as in terms of change, in terms of adaptation, in terms of loss as well. I didn't have, I didn't make that choice. My parents made it for me. So, uh, but I started remembering how my great grandfather, when he migrated to Brazil from Spain, he was about the same age as when I migrated to the U.S. from Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt that I was going through the same experiences as he was going through. I remember. Uh, my grandmother talking about what he had to go through, the adaptation, uh, uh, trying to 
grow roots, not having friends, not having relatives to to be there for him and having to start from the very beginning from from scratch. So, and then as I got uh, into uh, the studies of my genealogy and I got into greater depths and, and went farther back in time, I realized that a lot of our experiences were happening every two to three generations as the family would move from one country to another. We were repeating the same cycle of adaptation, of hybridization of language, of, of religion, of ethnicity, of identity. So I am you, you are me, simply means what you go through is what I will go through, and what I go through is what my children will go through, and that will keep on happening no matter what. Mm-hmm. And that's just uh, one of those uh, reflections. Now, why it's, uh, it's cattle, why it's bulls and calf, that's a whole different part of the conversation, but that's uh, the essence of this piece. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then let me zoom out. Yes. And what, what, was the, what was the timeline for developing this work? I, for some strange reason, I've been taking about three weeks to complete every single one of my artworks uh, as for the past uh, uh, year. For some reason, it takes me three, three weeks. No, doesn't matter how big, doesn't matter how small, how complex, it's about three weeks. Hmm. And when yeah. he says three weeks, it's not like uh, he spends all day, every day, de- developed and obsessed over it. It's not like... No. I mean, I, I, I can dedicate about eight hours a day. Uh, right now, I'm dedicating about 12 hours a day for my work because I have a deadline. It's a lot that I'm doing. So... But now if I have three hours, I'm also a, a professor and, and uh, often I'm painting uh, in the studio where I'll be receiving students. So in between classes, I mean, but I usually take three weeks no matter what. I think it's a, an attention span kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he said that, uh, Johnny said you give a lot of thought to the direction of the eyes, of your eyes in your painting. Definitely. Thank you, Johnny, for realizing that. The eyes there is very important because if you look at the eyes, can you get a little bit closer, Dana, if it's possible? Yeah. You will see that the eyes, they they end up including you in the conversation. Even though they're saying to each other, I am you and you are me, they're not, they're not looking at each other. They're looking at you, at the viewer. So by doing that, they're creating a triangle. I am you, you are me. I am you, you are me. So it's going from baby to parent, from parent to viewer, from viewer to baby, and back and forth. It keeps going like that. So it's including you in the conversation. That is an attempt that I, uh, I'm, uh, that I'm, uh, I'm putting here an effort to bring the viewer into the conversation about immigration, about histories of diaspora, of migration, that we all are part of this conversation. It's not about current immigrants. It's about us recognizing the the immigrant within each one and within our own histories. Yeah, he said, uh, Johnny said perhaps they're asking for validation. Definitely, definitely. All of these uh, interpretations are valid. All of these interpretations are 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 great. I I love uh, when when the viewer brings in uh, their own Expected. interpretation because it's it's amazing what I can learn. Definitely, who doesn't need validation, right? They're saying this and they're looking at us. What do we think about it? It's important for them to know what we think about it. He said most immigrants seek some sort of validation due to the pressure of past parents. 100%. That's true. 100%. Yes. Yeah, because it feels like it, their eyes are almost vulnerable. Like, like they're just looking for like you know what I mean? You agree? Of kind of a thing. I see what you guys are saying. Yeah. That's Very awesome. good. I love it. Love it. All right. Let's see what else we got. Ooh. Let me try to turn that. Okay. So here we are at another part of the body series. Um, we're using the use of orange. Um, I don't know, do you see it yet? Yes, I see it. So we have a playful, happy, 
you know, a lot of, um, you know, not going into too much um, assumption for what this means, but a lot of women ha deal with emotions. Um, yeah. They, you know, men or whoever says they could be emotional, right? Mm -hmm. So this was a big deal to do these series as a way of understanding, you know, the beauty and sadness, the beauty and depression, the beauty, like there's a beauty in all feelings because yes. all of those feelings are valid because yes. of the way that the woman is developed, you know, in the body. Um, we have these hormones, we, you know, process different. So this is just another element of just um, understanding and expression. Mm -hmm. So this one, um, and being, embracing it and not being shying away from it. Um, so this is more of just a happiness you know, being where you're at and being okay with who you are type of piece. And I think the dynamic, the way the powder fell was exciting because it started, um, you had to, we had to move, our, I had to move my hands quickly in order to get that, that figure or that X frame uh -huh. around the, around the body. Amazing. Yeah, so that's this one. And what I like about it is that uh, you were talking about emotions and um, and, and how uh, emotions affect all of us, of course. And, and here you are, you are the archetype of the of the female uh, uh, personality, identity, and all that. And um, what I like about the orange and as soon as you mentioned the word emotion, what it came to my mind is we have the color blue, right? The blue, uh, especially in in the lexicon of the U.S. of American English, uh, the blues, you know, is to feel sad, to feel depressed, and uh, the orange is the exact opposite of blue. It's the complementary color of blue is orange. Mm -hmm. So the, the exact opposite of the blues is what? Is uh, Yeah, on the spectrum of color. Yes, on the spe exactly, on the color wheel. Uh, the complementary color to blue is orange. And your expression here is one that shows that you're not going through the blues at, at all. You're excited, you're happy. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is really speaking a very interesting natural natural uh, uh, visual language that deals with the materiality of art. I like that a lot. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we have somebody else who came in, the young you. Kid Guru. This is awesome. Welcome, Kid Guru. <laughs> Thanks for joining. <laughs> um, and then Johnny said it's a nicely put together compilation of technical and performance art. Thank you very much. It wasn't there, easy. Uh, but I think... Uh, and then they say, you know, when women are smiling, it's so like in advertising and um, when they're, they're, they're beautiful, they're most beautiful when they're smiling and happy. Sure. I just think that's interesting, yes. you know, because, you know, that's a part of being, you know, the significance of being a, a woman is smiling and being that presence that maybe a man would need or a family would need to carry that, that trait perhaps. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about. For this Very time. Love it. So let's move on. Whoa. That was fast. It zooms. You guys who are watching, uh, if you haven't uh, done the login so you can join us in the chat, make sure you do. It's not a, it won't take you too long. It takes a couple of minutes, right, Dana? Yes. Yes. Come in, come in. The young kid grew up that I found this stream on Instagram and clicked over because I am a student of the arts. <laughs> All right. You're a student of the arts, and so are we. He's we a master, the kid guru. We're all yes. a student, learning every day. We're humbled to be here. Yes. Beautiful that technology brought us together. <laughs> okay, We're... let's let's talk about this piece. All right. What do you guys what do you guys think of this piece here? It's quite long. It feels very fabric focused. Nice suit, Jonathan. Thank you, uh, Young Kid Guru. What's your name, Young Kid Guru? Uh, yeah, I try to dress up because it's an honor to be 
uh, you know, talking to people who love art and to be around art. So I feel like the occasion calls for a nice suit. Thank you. Okay, David. David. Welcome, David. Or David. So. David is, David is right. Yes. David or David. Okay. Uh, this piece here. Um, you know what? I will show you a little bit. You can, if you can zoom in a little bit. Yes, I will. But on my, on my uh, video here, my personal video, I perhaps can have it right behind me. Oh, we see it behind you. That's awesome. Yeah. Is see, that it's fabric? right here. Because I'm, I'm in the space where I'm creating my next collection. Wow. So it's quite long. I mean, I don't even know how... Do you, do you know I, the dimensions? Tell. Yeah. I don't even know how long this is. It's several feet high. Look. Wow. Yeah. So... This piece here is um, quite a strong one. I, I see a lot of... Um, the significance here is... Uh, that's the part of redemption. Again, I'm talking about... I'm always talking about uh, how we move across time and space. I, I, I often focus on the narratives of immigration um, about uh, each one of us. Uh, we all have that. It's so wrong to think that this is about what's happening right now in this country. We are judged by the world as a country with amnesia, that we have a very short attention span. Let's not forget where we each came from. Why? Because that way we know where we're going. I know it sounds so cliche to say that, but I choose to say that at this moment. Why? Because by knowing our history, by knowing our challenges, we know our strength. We know what we went through. So think about this. There's a lady there. She's pregnant. Right above the lady and the bull, there's the word redemption with a heart. And you have several bulls around this sun, like this yellow shape that's encompassing them. The bull that's above the word redemption is facing the other side. It's facing the left. Yeah. Yes, so that means that's the bull who decided to change its course. That's that one who will make it out alive from a bullfighting arena. So in other words, the life is a bullfighting arena. It's full of challenges. You have to be courageous and strong. And not everybody makes it out. But that bull will make it out alive, strong, and will survive and thrive. So right now, I'm talking about this idea that you stick together, a lot like the first painting that we started looking at uh, in this virtual uh, gallery tour. This is a couple. They're sticking together. They are growing as a family. They are developing. There's beauty in them. She has these blue hearts all over her, her dress. He is full of these flowers, all symbols of uh, life, all symbols of things that are blooming, of courage, of looking at life with a uh, positive uh, outlook and perspective and that's what it's about redemption here I'm, I'm using heavy uh, almost religious language here um, I'm trying to say that uh, what is the redemption redemption is when you are avenged or when you are able to return or when you are able to uh, go back to where you belonged and what I mean here it's not a place it's not a time in history. It's just a pristine state, spiritual and mental state. Um, it's really about you feeling, uh, you being at your best. Uh -huh. Yes. So that's what I want to uh, talk about here. Um, and together, you know, always doing this together, never alone, always do, doing this as a family, as a group. Um, and then you're always fine no matter where you are. That's what I'm talking about. Now, the young kid guru says, the peace raises public awareness and creates positive dialogue about immigrants. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, this whole show that, I, that you see behind me here um, is about that. And I'm going uh, head first against the rhetoric that has uh, trying to uh, has been trying to make immigrants look so bad when 
we're actually ba the backbone of the strength of this country. That's right. And yes. then um, Johnny said he's initially drawn to the hierarchy hierarchy of the painting, like when you showed them at first. And you yes. don't know how long it is? Do you want me to show you how long it is? Yeah. Sure. It's very long. Look, I'm really far from it. It's, you can't even see it all. You see? Yeah. There's this building next to me. Look how big this is. Yeah. That's so awesome. if, if I get close, I don't even know how, how, how long this must be. I'm a 5'9". This must be, what, a 15 feet maybe? 15. I don't know. I have to measure. Yeah. It's still a work in progress, guys. That's why we're doing this. Yes. <laughs> All right, should we move to the Let's next one? Let's move on to the next one. Okay. Okay, this one is, uh, I don't know if it's loaded yet. Give it a second. So this one was on the front of the flyer because this originally curates, curates well with his what was the first piece that we showed? What was it titled? Uh, for She is Queen. For She is Queen. Uh -huh. So um, this bold um, this bold statement with this woman kind of embracing her wings or embracing her her stance. Very good. Kind of really went well next to the curation for I Am Queen, which is the figure uh, with the, holding the um, sword. That was yes. in the other painting. It, it goes. It went very well together. Yeah. So this one was developed, um, you know, c c um, continuing the artistic liberation through the uh, powdered pigments. This was about mm -hmm. number six. We did, yes. as you can see, there's one, two, three, four. F there's like five or six other colors that were used. So this is like one of the ending um, stances that we mm -hmm. used. Um, so, you know, using this light blue as just a bold um, embodying or heavenly um, sta statement was kind of, speaks for itself. And we yes. have someone from England. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Cheerio from England. Welcome, welcome. All the way from England. Oracle RX. <laughs> Do you have any comments on this uh, piece? I do, yes, definitely. Uh, well, again, I, I really like how you went from orange to blue, and, uh, and your expression here is uh, uh, not of uh, ecstasy, but it's more of, a, of, a, of in introspection. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it goes very well with the blue color. And I also like the fact that by this time, at this stage, you're more stained all over. Yeah. Your whole body, uh, your neck, your body, your hips, everything. Your hands are stained with uh, all of these uh, um, experiences that you just went through. You know, symbolically of many things that happened in your life and ex existence so far. So it goes very well together. Uh, you being at the center in most of your pictures, uh, whether or not you intended for this to happen, you end up having this Venus-like um, uh, kind of uh, aesthetics. Like a, uh, the heroine type of... The heroine, the yeah. Venus of uh, Botticelli. Uh, these are quite uh, old uh, uh, references to art. Mm -hmm. And I, I like this a lot. I like this a lot. Awesome. Yeah, good job. Thank you. We'll keep going. Yes. All right. Let's see what's next. Exile. All right. Exile. Let's see. I'll zoom out. So uh -huh. you guys have to remember this isn't to scale. These are um, just for the virtual tour. Yes. You know, the sizes uh -huh. change, but it's just no doubt yes. not to scale. Yes, so this one, uh, Exile, this is a work in textile, it's a working, uh, it's fabric, and um, 
my works uh, that I'm putting together right now, my ex my my next exhibit, uh, talks about the narrative from exile to redemption. So that uh, installation painting of the woman with the bull, that is the last piece of the show. And that one there is the first piece. The one that says exile is the first one. The one that says redemption is the last one. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so it goes from exile to redemption. Now, of course, right now, we're taking it, we're deconstructing it. It's out of context. And that's uh, definitely uh, okay. So, this one is very simple. Exile causes tears, tears of blood. Uh, it, it saddens you. It takes you out of your... Uh, environment where you grew up, where you you were familiar with everything else. Yeah. When you're sent into exile, whether it was uh, self exile or if you're, it was forced exile, you, there will always be uh, tears of blood, very deep cuts in your own heart. So this year, the text where it says exile uh, around it is a heart, and I'm borrowing uh, the aesthetics of this from. Um, Iberian Peninsula religious uh, archetypes. So if you look at the archetypes of the religion of, the, of Portugal and Spain, they use a lot of these in churches, in murals, and I went back and I borrowed them. So it's very cliche, it's very kitsch, uh, and I'm really going for that. I'm not shying away from being kitsch. Mm -hmm. uh, the red is this uh, velvet-like uh, fabric, uh, it's really just cutting things, putting it together, sewing it, and I'm loving it. And you're it. using it, and you're doing that on fabric or on canvas. That that is uh, that's not on canvas. That, that these fabric, tears like, are floating like the wall, on the wall, like the wall behind it, you. We can see yes, it. Yes, each one of these tears have to be uh, they have they have to be pierced onto the onto the wall to stay there in that. And position. then you said redemption was the last one. Which is, Redemption is the last one, but we go to all. One, right? Yes. I'm just zooming in so you guys can see the difference. Mm hmm. I don't know how fast that loads. We're delayed about 10 seconds. But you see yeah. how the one to the left in the space, mm -hmm. and then the redemption and then exile. Mm hmm. Very exciting. I like, the use of your, I like the use of fabric because your, your oil fabrics are incredible. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, so now that you're using the actual tactical fabric to create the another element is so fascinating. Yes. And it feels very flat versus your normal, which is your, versus your paint. traditional paintings. Yes. Which is Because unique. I decided to go kitsch here. I decided to flatten everything into pop, a very like make simple. Make it more pop. Yes, very, yeah. very, very much pop. Yes. Very cool. Yes. Um, and then, we have any comments? And then, for those that are joining us, if you just want to see some of the works that you miss, before we go to the, our last few, um, I'm just going to zoom out for a second. It's exciting. Very much, very much. Technology is a wonderful thing that we're utilizing. So cool. Okay, let's go to another one, unless we have any other questions. This is the next one in the show. Uh-huh. So we have a very, not, not Buddhist, but very religious, very, a stance of power, a stance of recognition. Uh-huh. This is a cool one. Uh, Johnny said, great work, diversity of work. Nice. Thank you, Johnny. From Seattle. So, so this one is um, the one of the last, this dark blue was the last color we used. Because right. obviously it's so enriching, the, this royal <laughs> blue. So royalty, um, you know, you have symbolisms of that, you have that, and religious mm -hmm. symbolisms of a stance of prayer so yeah this was a this is a powerful piece very powerful very powerful 
Beautiful. Wow. Zoom out a little. So it seems that uh, you achieved the uh, enlightenment only after you went through all the different colors. Yeah. You know, Buddhism is a lot about that. Well, this is also interesting because it's kind of like um, this, because of the way the face is framed and the way the post-production came out, it feels very statue-like. Very much. Um, which kind of goes off of like a, something you would worship or something that's <laughs> symbolic of something that you, you know, praise. Yes. But being that self is uh, that self praise could take it to mm -hmm. other levels of awareness of the self. So yes. this is this is a this is a, a unique the way this turned out I was very happy with. Yes. It really is uh, nice to have uh, all this blue suspended in the air. Mm -hmm. Like it a lot. Uh, Johnny said, so intrigued how you capture the powder behind you. It's a chameleon of different qualities. Very cool. Yeah. How do you do that? All right, let's go on. Your jaw is more pronounced, so there is a very self confident stance altogether. Yeah, like a strong, dominant assuredness. Mm -hmm. She said it's like a, a peaceful stance. Beautiful. Awesome. Yes, looking great. Awesome, okay. Oh, we turned the corner. Oh, sorry, got ahead. <laughs> check your shoes. One second. <laughs> Okay, now we're on uh, memory. Memory. There we go. Sorry, the computer mouse went a little haywire for a second. Look at that. So memory. Yeah. These are, you know, in the process of uh, exile and redemption. What does that mean? Exile really means getting out. Uh, being expelled, uh, moving away from something, uh, exiling from yourself is really not... Um, exiling from yourself is really uh, n not living according to your own nature. Yeah. And, uh, and when in this process, uh, the only way to go back to that place where you felt the most comfortable uh, is through memory. If you can't remember what it felt like to be yourself, it's very difficult for you to go back to it. So memory is essential in the process between exile and redemption. So that's what this one is about. It's, it's a burning desire that only starts once you remember what it felt like to be yourself or to be in the place where you felt comfortable. Wow. Yes. And this is fabric that's being stitched together. It's all fabric, um, stitched together. It's cut fabric and that's it. No paint involved there. How long do yes. those take? Couple of days. Couple of days. Uh, the idea is what takes longer. So. Uh, the idea takes me sometimes a couple weeks, but once you have the the idea, you just you just go for it. Even though it has that that more like iconic pop look, like a more mm -hmm. modern look, it still has the it does still has that layering. So you yes, can see, yes, you know you have several like layers to mm -hmm. create the you know the composition, even yeah. even with that pop. Because mm -hmm. of that font, the flatness of the font, but it still yeah. creates a, a nice composition. Yes. Is, did and, you, and is there a reason why you didn't use two different reds? The fire. Is there a reason why I, I, I didn't use two, two different reds? Yeah. Yes, because I want it to be iconographic. So I don't want to confuse, you know, if there's one red, it's one red. Okay. There's, you know, one of everything. Now, these here are sort of like 
crests that go on top of the paintings that I will be showing in my next show. So let me see if I can show you what I mean by that. Look, I'm take so if you focus on my on my video, you see where this painting of memory, I mean, not this painting, this fabric piece goes. Yeah, I so see it. So this you, can you see it right now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it has that iconic pop element to it next to the painting. Uh, that's unique. Yes. So that's what it is. And they, they each have um, a, a crest that goes on top of them. So I see. Because the paintings are, are part of a, of a narrative of exile uh, to redemption. Awesome. Yes. We have a quote. Do you want to read it? Or do you want me sure. To An artist who makes pictures that look good but express nothing is like a writer whose words sound good but have no meaning. Gerald Bromer. That is true, young, young kid guru. That is very much true. Art for art's sake, I would say, is not my thing. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I like art with meaning. Yes. Yes. And then mm. this last one. Um, is right before the because if you can see we exit the gallery i'm going to pull back for a second he said very fine words from the inventor of the barometer <laughs> <laughs> yes um so as you can see uh johnny said flowers are very fragile so we can equate them with memories they start as a seed, grow as stem, and eventually blossom. We can't just cut the stem or our past memories. They become a part of us for life, where whether we like it or not. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, viewers. And we have somebody else, uh, Pixel Saris. <laughs> uh, yes, so welcome. Welcome, all of you guys. Uh, thank you so much for bringing in your, your input, your opinions, your... Uh, okay. perspective your uh, interpretations to this you are you are just as important as as the artists who are showing right now thank you very much um, so so for people who joined we're doing the last wall of the exhibition um, and we're doing just a pan out but then this would be the final piece um, so this one is kind of obvious. It's more of a tribal exploration of like uh, warrior-like action shot that was nice. um, framed. Wow. So I used actually that skull a lot. I draw that with oil as a still life. I use that skull a lot in my paintings. So taking that... Oh. Um, I, I make little sculptures from that skull. So using that in my actual photography was very personal. Mm -hmm. Kind of just this um, study of the anatomy, um, understanding, you know, like you said earlier, this kind of matches the, the painting of the fight, like life is a fight. Well, I don't know, which, which one was that? We were talking, remember we were talking and you said life is a fight? I think it's the the half man, half animal. It might have been that one. But this is kind of just where that takes place, um, kind of commenting on that and life and, you know, surviving through it and fighting. Kind of speaks for itself. Uh huh. So. Love it. So pri pri primeval, this. Yeah. Really? Primitive. Yes. It took a, it took a, a, several several takes to get the powder and really? the, the face and the posture to move, but you know I think it went together nicely at the end. Hmm. And then um, before this shot, we we took the the green and the blue, and we kind of just like like you know back in the day with the before they go to war, they paint up. That's kind uh, of what yeah. we did where we. We applied the paint with a, my like my hand to create the the greens and the blues on the skin. Mm hmm So yeah. Amazing, amazing. So, uh, 
and and you repeat the use of this call. This call here, you 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 use a lot. Uh, in I've seen we had we've had shows where you paint it small in a more abstracted kind of way, um, and you also add in your still life paintings. So, what is the meaning of this call for you? Um. I like the small detail in pulling the hair back on the one as opposed to the rest of them. Oh yeah, thank you. He's noticing the hair changes. So, yes. So the skull is obviously a more obvious study of anatomy of life and death. Mm -hmm. So um, I use that. I use that a lot in my paintings because it's just an intimate, it, uh, studying the anatomy in the body is the hardest thing to paint. Mm -hmm. We can all agree. Mm -hmm. like sure. Getting the tone of the skin, but going back to the bone structure and getting the face and the muscles, like that takes years and many years in practice and you know, as you're a figurative painter, so you understand. So having oh, yeah. a, a, having a skull and a, like a skeleton in your studio isn't unusual because yes. you use that as a reference. Yes, exactly. So this is like so I use this in my photography because it's an intimate subject from my studio. Uh huh. Bringing it to life, exposing it for it's mm -hmm. what it is, and it kind of fit with the theme of the you know the warrior tribal. Yes. Survivor type. Uh huh. We were doing here. And um, it's not uncommon for artists to have to have a skull in their studios, uh, whether you are a writer or um, or or a painter. It's quite common. One of the reasons why a lot of artists have skulls, besides uh, the need to to uh, have a reference for anatomy is because it provides what in art we call memento mori. So this, the, the, the presence of death. Uh, this is one way to help us internalize the fact that we're here for a limited amount of years, that one day we will be just like that skull that's there. So having that constant reminder that life is limited, that our days on this earth are limited, it makes us pursue art in a more aggressive way and to look for ways to identify what is truly important about our message. So we hone it down. It's almost like that uh, a, a, a process of distillation, of uh, distilling uh, liquor or to create that perfume that is very strong because the oils are so pure. Mm. So, so a lot of artists use skulls as just a reminder that we don't live forever and we should make amazing art right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And I think, um, like you said, having that reminder in the studio is just as important to the quickness of maybe your marks and your mark making, you know. Imagine scare, like do, painting something that scares you, you know, it's sobering. Mm -hmm. And so some of the gestures and some of the impacts you make on the painting can be from having that as in your studio set up. Yes. So there's yes. many ways to spin it, but yes, that's kind of the gist of that one. Uh-huh. So, so we have Ja Rule, my best friend is from Nigeria. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So, so I just want to... Uh, very insightful narratives from the both of you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. And as as we said, we're always also learning from our current work. We're kind Definitely. of always, this is a good time for us when we're in the, like, because right now I'm in the middle of some bodies of work and so is Jonatas. So taking the time to talk about it is all about part of the process as well. Very much. So I'm going to go back outside just so the people that join us can see the, the what the experience looked like. Uh-huh. Um, we used, you know, as commentary, technology is important to us. It's vital to our survival. So we're using this VR experience to take you on a tour when the challenges of distance 
or gallery appointments or things that may seem more of a traditional method may not be the answer. We're filling and using these virtual methods as a way to create communication between the art and the artist and the bridging the gap between the viewer. Mm -hmm. So yes. let me just go through these. So I'm going to go in the door really fast. Uh -huh. So Young Kid Guru or Jaru is asking uh, uh, how often are we going to be doing this if it's going to be on, on a monthly basis? Well, that's a great question. This is our first one. Um, we were beta testing it. I think it went well. I think so too. I think we'll be definitely doing this quarterly, if not monthly. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think, Jonatas? Do you like this? I think so. I think so. I think uh, if we do it monthly, uh, it would be very good. Um, we would perhaps have to show more process work. Yeah. Uh, since uh, you know, we're always constantly producing, we can show works that are in progress alongside with works that are already finished. And, uh, and we can also end up showing less, so we can have a longer discussion about each piece, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, like shorter discussions. And um, we also, yeah. you know, this is a salon environment, so we have another artist that different art. We encourage a, always an, a third artist or anyone that's interested mm -hmm. that um, fought, like has the same model that we do to work with us. So we are, we're always open to showcasing other work as we go along. Um, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yes. So, so Johnny likes the, the, the idea of the of process. I like it too. Okay. And then just go around one more time. So this was some of the work for one more view. Um, I think next time we should save the videos for next time. Sure. Because, you know, we're running on two hours. Um, I think. What do you think? Yeah, let's, let's definitely save the videos for next time. Yes, so I think just it's a good idea. Through. We actually have each of us have four more pieces to show, and he has four more. But maybe we should curate that into the next one with a video, the video element. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, guys. But I think uh, I, I think this was incredibly successful. If anybody has any more questions, please just uh, put them on the comment uh, sec sesh section. And if if, uh, if anything, uh, Dana, how can they contact us? Maybe through our social media? Yeah, uh, so um, if you're in this chat, that means you're connected to my channel. You can just send me a message. Uh -huh. um, also, you can uh, e email me at info at weprovokeart.com, which is in the uh, my about section of this channel. And then I will always relay the message. I'll share the information with Jonatas, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get connected. Yes. Are you guys based in the United States? Yes, we are in the southern part uh -huh. of the United States. Yes. Um, in the southern belt. Uh huh. In South Florida. Sunny Florida. Mm hmm. <laughs> so there you go. That's our virtual tour. All right, guys. Thank you so much for attending our tour. We hope you enjoyed the experience. Um, it was very new and exciting for us, and it creates a great conversation and a pedestal to yes. have, you know, more of these. And we're really glad that you were part of this experience. Thank you. This was great, insightful, and inspiring. The body of work makes you think through fully. Thank you, Johnny, and thank you, everyone else. Thank you. Thank you guys, thank you Dana, it was a great pleasure. Thank you guys, it was an incredible honor to, to be here with you guys. Awesome, alright, we'll talk to you next time. Alright. <laughs>